Let's have a look at the types of data that is collected within the organisation and then explain how these support HR practices. Take a few moments to create a spidergram of the different types of data that HR collects. Aim for 10 seconds and then we'll move on to the next slide. A good way to come up with data is the data that's related to the employee life cycle. For example, as an applicant, you would collect the details of their education and skills that the applicant possesses. You may want them to complete a physical exam for certain roles, and you would keep a copy of interview notes and also an offer letter. Once the person becomes an employee, we generate more data related to the employee, which could include copies of the contracts, any salary adjustments that take place, any benefits changes, job transfers, any additional skills or education they acquire whilst in our employment, or if they undergo a change of status. Once the employee becomes an ex-employee, there's still data that we would need to collect, such as pension details. We may need to to provide a job reference for that person. They may have continuing benefits and we would need a change of address to keep in touch with them. Compare your answers to the diagram on the right. Perhaps you have identified more than we have. Let's look at how the data, the data collected support HR practices. Some examples are personal details such as age or gender. Once this data has been collected, it could be analysed to give a profile of your workforce. This could give you clues or influence your benefit package. For example, an older workforce may prefer benefits such as enhanced pension payments or an advanced healthcare plan whereas a younger workforce may prefer investment in training and development or also bonuses. Sickness records could be collected and then analysed and this could influence how a job is designed or perhaps highlight the protective equipment is required. Absence records again can be collected and analysed in a number of ways. For example, you could find the particular day that people take off. Is there a trend? This would lead to the question, is there a need for a better policy or how can we make Mondays better? Time and attendance data is useful for helping to manage flexi time and overtime, which can help future HR planning to manage the peaks and troughs of the business. And finally, training records. The example here is induction. Induction records could be kept along with length of service. We could check that the induction is effective and we could see if it makes people stay for longer in the organisation.